Welcome to Click Stuff Casualties of War, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Jason Alvey and Alex Coons. Hey, I am unbelievably appreciative that you are joining us today for Clickstaff Casualties of War. Um, this is Alex. Joining me today is Jason and Jeremy Stallings. How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. How's it going? It's it, it, interesting times, you know? Interesting times. Yeah. Yeah, what a world we live in right now. <laughs> uh, what about you, Jeremy? How are you doing today? I'm doing all right today. Um, yeah, it's just real interesting times. Working in the medical office is uh, a little bit scary, but, you know, it's it's not it's not too terrible. I don't, I'm not like a doctor. Sing them, so it's... Yeah, it's, but despite this, these interesting times, people find themselves having more time at home uh, to play with their children. I know I've spent more time with my kids because e- even though I'm still working during all of this, it's, I have nowhere to go. Um, so <laughs> we've been playing some hero clicks. We've been doing some uh, casual fun i know online play has seen a lot of play i've seen some people get online to do some casual stuff as well so very very interesting and you know what people need content more now than ever that's what i say yes that is true we're trying to fill that time in for you so (laughs) yeah absolutely um so yeah, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, this is Clickstaff, kind of the casual version. Casualties of War, Cacao, however you want to say it. This is our second episode, so less uh, structured. We do have some segments that we'll go into, but it's more of guys just talking about comics and show, TV shows and hero clicks and how they all go together. Yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been reading a ton of comics this weekend uh, on, on Marvel Unlimited since Alex got me interested again uh, on the last episode. So uh, I've got a lot of reading in. Yeah, it's uh, that stuff's yeah. addictive, man. Being able to just pull up Marvel Unlimited and just getting pretty much it, it has most comics. It's probably about six to nine months behind, obviously for good reason of current print. So you won't see some of the current stuff but you'll see i think war of the realms is on there most of it and they're slowly getting some absolute carnage on there which that was pretty recent so yeah i mean there's so there's so much stuff on there though like i haven't read like you can just I mean, it's, it's so it's so cost effective like for ten dollars a month i can read like <laughs> 10 times that you know you know in a week like what a comic would cost you you know it's like four dollars a piece <laughs> right and, yeah. and this this is not to discourage the the buying of comics. Uh, I I oh. view it kind of like movies. Like I'll go see a movie, and if I really like the movie, I'll buy it. And so that's what I do with comics. I don't have the money to be able to buy comics weekly or have you know a box at the store that the you know they put your your weeklies or monthlies in. So it's more of hey, I like reading on Marvel Unlimited. If I find a series or a comic event I like. Uh, then I'll go find it. Go find it and buy the collection. Oh, buy yeah. the collect. I, yeah, I, still, that's great. I, I still have a pull list at the store. I still get stuff every week. Uh, I mean, I can't afford to read everything. I to buy everything from them I'd like to. So right. this is filling in the blanks. What about you, Jeremy? Do you read any comics? Uh, Well, I was. I, when I first started getting the Hero Clicks, I started picking up comics, which I'm still fairly new for. At least compared to Jason, I'm still kind of new to... Hero Clicks, I started picking up comics then. I haven't recently. I'm more of a DC guy, so you guys talk Marvel. That's fair. Kind of, I know some of them. I read some Marvel. Like I read Deadpool. Um, I read some of Civil War too. I read some of that. So, but nothing recently. So you know, I'm open to, to some suggestions, whatever you guys think should be or would be good. Um, maybe on the Marvel side. I know you guys are more Marvel friendly, but I'm probably reading Marvel too. I'm just more of a DC guy. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's kind of like watching The Office or Parks and Rec. You've seen the, the whole series, 
but it's just enjoyable to go back after a year or two and just rewatch it. And for me, it's like, you know, I'll yeah. go back and reread War of Light because that's just such a great series. Like, yes. uh, yeah. uh, I never watched The Office or Parks either, so I, I don't know what you're talking about there. <laughs> okay. Well, if you, ha- you should take, if you have some time off, go watch it. It is very, very enjoyable shows. Or Brooklyn Nine Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine's a hoot, also. Okay, let's see. Uh, we just three of started watching uh, Lock and Key last night. Well, I've heard good th- th- and it's it's been pretty good so far. First couple of were pretty good. Yeah, I've heard good things about that show. I haven't gotten around to watching yeah. it, but watching that and it and it's based off a of comic, so it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh. Alex so, inspired me to go read the Red Goblin stuff, and it is wonderful. Like, yeah, we luckily just saw in some gamma pictures of the upcoming Absolute Carnage set. Uh, they it is confirmed he's in the set. I do see a, a version of him. It's basically the Green Goblin. I'm not going to spoil anything, but basically Carnage and the Green Goblin end up working together, a symbiote type thing. And it is a fantastic series. It is on Marvel Unlimited. Not all of Absolute Carnage is, but that one is. Um, and I, I, as soon as yeah. I saw the sculpt, I was like, oh, it's going to be so sweet because he's just so good in that uh, in the, that series, that event. Oh, yeah. He, he takes Spider-Man to the limit in that uh, in that series, man. It was uh, it was he's definitely one of the better villains that they've had in quite some time. I feel like. Yeah, definitely. So I, I'm unbelievably pumped for the set that we're getting in august or september we've seen more pictures coming out like you saw the uh the one you were excited about that was it like a samurai or uh, the the pig the uh, spider pig oh spider the spider hammerai i think is what hammerai they yeah the hammerai yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what that's from. Like, I haven't seen anything, but damn, it's just, it just just seems cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I know WizKids and Marvel have been working on you know some custom characters. Like, this is the first time we're seeing it. Like, Leonardo da Venom, and maybe Hammer Eye isn't one. Also, unless we're wrong, if we're wrong. Hey, in the comments of the if this if you're listening to this on YouTube or on Facebook or whatever, hey, let us know what Hammer Eye is from because I have not. I'm not caught up on that kind of stuff, and I'd love to read something that includes Spider Ham being a, a a samurai. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I don't know if they are if they're making that stuff up or if that's just like something out of another book I haven't seen. I don't know, like whether it is or isn't. So, Jeremy, I know you mentioned you're more of a DC guy. We're going to talk some DC a little bit uh, here soon, but if you had to pick your favorite marvel team x-men avengers spider-man type what is your favorite part of what limited marvel that you have experience of uh, well i guess i read civil war 2 and uh that's where i got introduced to captain marvel so i'm a big fan of captain marvel as far as uh marvel is uh, mm-hmm. i'd say avengers probably because i'm a little bit more familiar with them um, Deadpool, the X Force. Um, I'm familiar with like the Deadpool and the Mark of the Money. I read the yeah. Marvel. So, so I'm familiar with them. I thought that was really, really fun, really fun to read. Uh, it's right. It's right when that the movie came out. I think it's when the comics started coming out. And he became a member of the Avengers. And, uh, oh yeah. He wanted to become his. You know, he, he made a team called like the Mercs for Money, and it had like a bunch of C-rated heroes like Stingray. Oh, I can't think of anybody else at the top of my head, but he took like the uh, the Avengers jet and made it the Deadpool jet, and that's how we got that clicks and everything. So, uh, oh, yeah. it was really, and, and actually, the whole I'm not going to try to ruin it. But it was like, it was like Solo and Terror in that, and like yeah, I don't remember. Solo yeah. and then uh, uh, but pretty much he's like he, he he's on the hunt for whoever killed his parents, I believe, if I can remember that correctly. And I'm not going to try to spoil anything, but it, it kind of plays to, uh, oh, Deadpool's like this big superstar now, but he kind of starts going back to his roots. So that was pretty, that was pretty interesting, like just being a, just being a merc. So it, mm-hmm. it, was, really fun. it was fun to read. It had some uh, funny, uh, he had an awesome fight with Sabretooth. That was awesome. That was a lot of fun. But uh, uh, 
yeah, it's probably probably Avengers more than anything than probably the the Mercs for Money. Uh, those two are probably the two that I enjoy the most. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think uh, one really good uh, series with Deadpool that I, I I encourage people to read is the series he does with Cable. There's a long series of Deadpool and Cable because uh, it kind of goes into. Uh, I think it goes in and out of House of M or just something like that, but it's very, very entertaining. Yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, that's been a while ago. Yeah, that's a long time ago. That's one of the series that I'll reread every once in a while. Yeah. There was another little ride. I don't think I finished it either. Uh, where it was Deadpool versus Thanos. That was uh, that was pretty fun too. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I remember the one you're talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't read that. I might check that out. It's fun. It's, it's a little short mini series, I think, like maybe five or six comics long. It's not very long, but it's fun. Yeah, because it has to do, I think, with doesn't it have to do with Mister Staff? It does. It's, they're, uh, oh, I can't remember. I think it, it's the whole. It's tied in the whole thing of how Mister Staff loves Deadpool so much because she can never have him, and Thanos does. Those. That. Yeah, that's that's some good stuff right there. Um, so why don't we talk a little bit, a little bit more, let's, uh, let's do some story time. Since we're talking Marvel, let's get some story time out of the way. We kind of already are talking about it. Uh, but one series I'm reading, and this is thanks to Jason, I started reading, uh, the Immortal Hulk because we got that recently Mm -hmm. in the cap set and I had never heard of Immortal Hulk before. And I knew everyone was pumped when we got the clicks and I was like, okay, well, I mean, Hulk's cool. Uh, Hulk that doesn't die, that's cool too. So I started reading that, and man, it's, I mean, it's, I, don't, I yeah. guess dark. It's kind of dark. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a horror comic, I guess. Uh, yeah, really. Like I don't know how far you've gotten. I've got up to issue uh, like thirteen. I've read through, I think, so far I'm, I'm, through the first like four or five. I haven't made it all the way yet. Well, I mean, that figure inspired me to go read this comic. Like, I mean, the 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 the, the sculpt is straight off of the of the cover of issue number oh, one. Yes. And all the all the comic uh, covers are done by Alex Ross, and man, they're amazing. Uh, but yeah, it, it's 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 got, it's got some horror tones to it, like uh, you know, I think is what it uh, seems like to me. Absolutely. And, yeah, the, the Hulk kind of has this new persona called the Devil Hulk uh, in this, which is and he's pretty cool. He can smell the lies that men are telling. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, he's Banner during the day, and he's Hulk at night. And Banner can die, but Hulk doesn't. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I, I'm really enjoying it so far. Like I say, I, I think I've got the first 13 issues down so far. So, yeah, most of the series I think is on uh, Marvel Unlimited. Once again, I'm not trying to plug yeah. too much, but definitely, definitely worth yeah, a like read. Twenty. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. That was that was definitely a hero quick that inspired me to go read the comic after I played it because I had a ton of fun with that. And uh, yeah, ex- excellent book. You should read it if you haven't read it. Hey, Jeremy. So uh, you uh, you are a much bigger DC fan than I am. Um, not that I don't like DC. You just are significantly more familiar than I am. So what would you be, uh, even if you're not reading now, what would you be reading if you could? What G- uh, G- uh, DC thing would you be reading? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's still running or yet or not, or still going on but I've, my favorite character is harley quinn this is my favorite comic book character uh i was reading her series quite a bit i don't know if it's still being um being made or not but that i would still probably read that if i, if I was still reading comics uh, i really liked the uh harley quinn's little black book series that was a lot of fun to read uh so he's teamed up with different uh justice league members mm-hmm. um which which made it really fun for like Hero Quick Spill too. So I really that's one of the reasons why I dove into that. Um I was starting to dabble a little bit into uh just the Justice League line. I think I picked up the uh oh I don't know which issue. It's like the big like issue would be like one hundred or fifty. I can't remember which one it was, but it's when uh Batman sat in the knowledge chair. The candid knowledge or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's I like picked, the uh, yeah the Dark Side War uh, storyline. Yeah, I picked up that comic and read that. It was good. 
thought about, hmm, that's my, this might be a series I'm interested in. But mainly, I, I, I focused mainly on the Harley Quinn stuff. I did read the uh, Poison Ivy little short story there. So anything that's like the DC villains, I think, uh, especially Batman's villains, I think they just have a really interesting story. So if there's anything out there as far as like just the villains, those would be something I would definitely pick up. Yeah, I know DC has started to, they've renamed their, um, they have an, like an adult, more mature, not adult, but a mature series uh, that started, uh, I think in 2018 or something. It's called the DC Black Label. And so they have a lot of Joker stuff, Batman stuff. I know Harley has like a couple comics with Birds of Prey in it. Uh, it's I haven't read any of them. I've heard about them. There, there's uh, looking at it now. There's one called Harleen. I don't know what that one's about. Um, right. Oh, it's about Harley's origin story. Right, right. Which I mean, that I mean, it depends on where you read it from. I mean, she was, you know, of course. If you've watched the anime series, she was a uh, uh, psychologist for the Joker, and Joker kind of talked her into, you know, setting them free. But there's more to it. I mean, there's a lot more to it, even going back before that, where she wanted to go to Arkham, and they wouldn't let her, and, like, she had yeah. to persuade, quote-unquote, someone to let her in. And uh, she actually wanted to be an inmate and see how that was, and that's how she got in touch with her. So, are you sad to see the Harley set go? Because I don't, th I don't think last episode wasn't when we heard about rotation. I don't think. No. So uh, that was we know rotation. Yeah. Yeah. So we know rotation. Harley's going. We knew Harley was going to go anyway. So, Jeremy, Jeremy, what were your your favorite clicks that you play versions of Harley throughout the history of Hero Clicks? Oh, like all the versions, or just yeah, the every version from the the. Uh, world champion one the the or i don't know if it's nationals or world champion the one, one with the chair world champ. Yeah. yeah it was world champ yeah that that one's probably my all-time favorite it was the first one first harley click i had uh it was in the flash set it was a rare um i actually did really well with her in a couple of tournaments so uh um i really enjoyed her uh, of course title harley um i really like Tyler harley a lot mm -hmm. uh, and i've never even got my hands on them yet Really, really enjoyed the storyline of when it's from Harley's Little Black Book when she teamed up with Green Lantern and she became the Red and Black Lantern and the um, Green Lantern both in the same issue. Uh, that that story itself was just really fun. Uh, pretty much what happens in that story is she she goes to buy a Green Lantern ring on eBay and someone outbids her. So then, <laughs> yeah, so someone out and then. She's like, I really want one of these rings, and she fought. And like during all this, there was like a crash. Let someone, someone crashed on Earth. I, I don't know which Lantern Corps it was, but they had a Red Lantern ring, a Black Lantern ring, separated. And these kids picked them up and like busted the capsules to get to them, and it fused the rings together, making a Red Black Lantern ring. So she found that on eBay for cheaper and bought it, and she put it on. That's how she becomes the Red and Black. Lantern. <laughs> wow. And she she goes on to that story and starts beating the hell out of Green Lantern as the red and black lantern. It was a lot of fun. Um they had an arm I think they had an arm wrestling contest. I think I think part of the powers too on that on one of them uh is putting each other adjacent, I think. You roll a D six and it does something, I believe I can't. Yeah, remember. giant giant arm wrestling match is the name of the power. I'm looking at it now. Right. So that that was a lot of fun. She just started beating the snot out of them. And then someone comes, I, I can't remember the exact story, but someone comes and tries to get that particular ring that she had, and they took it, and they defeated Green Lantern. And in, in the process, she picks up the Green Lantern ring and saves them and becomes Green Lantern. So uh, that, was, that was a really fun issue. I, I've never had those clicks, but I don't have them. But those two are always two of my favorite Harley versions of clicks as well. Um, just, just all of them. I think I have just a bag somewhere in my hero click stuff. I just put all of the Harley, Harley Quinn clips in, just so I can just pull those out and play with them by themselves whenever you know the times right, the bills right. Yeah. Now, another figure that I, I don't know if it's really considered Harley Quinn is Harley Quinn from I think World's Finest. Yeah, that that's the uh, the KC one. 
Yeah. Yes. She she she's a lot of fun too. Um with her, you know, just moving and dropping the jack of bar. She was really good. I enjoyed her as well, but she's been on for a little bit now. But, uh, that's another that's another series I'll come back to every couple of years is Kingdom Come. It's yeah, really, such that, a good one. Yeah, I have that book sitting around here somewhere that I haven't read it yet. I picked it up but I haven't read it yet. But I'm I'm familiar oh. with it. It's a fantastic story. You really got to read it. Yeah, it's sitting around here somewhere. I got it for like five dollars one day. I was like, oh yeah, I've heard some good things about this and I really like some of the figures. Of course Shazam's another one of my favorite characters, uh so I really liked uh you know the Shazam figure from that set as well. Oh yeah. I mean, there's a reason that they keep making them and keep having the keyword, or that they made a team ability based right. off of a comic event. Like, I don't know if yeah. we have, do we have that for Marvel? Like a, a specific mm. team ability that is based off of a alternate? No. I'm going to look now. Well, I haven't thought well, about if you go it. like, if you say like Avengers Initiative for the movie, but like other than, I don't think we have one based off a comic. Uh, I mean, I I think of Avengers Initiative as just the the actual Avengers Initiative, like the the training. Wasn't that the wasn't that what they called the training thing for Avengers Initiative? Or am I thinking uh, of something else? Well, in the in the movie, that's what that's the original Avengers uh, team idea that uh, that uh, Nick Fury had was called the Avengers Initiative uh, back way back in like Iron Man, right? Um, but and that's where and that was the first thing you saw it on was those Avengers movie uh, pieces. Uh, was where the Avengers Initiative TA originally came out on. I don't. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. So they, that that comic was called the. I think it was a comic called the Initiative. With the yeah, Avengers, Avengers the Avengers. Initiative. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that came out after uh, after Civil War. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they're like, okay, we need to rebuild uh, the Avengers and have like an army of superheroes to work for all of this. And then came Dark Reign and Secret Evasion and all that good stuff. But yeah, I remember Avengers The Initiative being the uh, the school that they set up or training academy. And I've always yeah. kind of equated it to that, I guess. But I, I get what you're saying. Like movie-wise, it makes sense. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm looking at the team abilities. Uh, Defenders, Fantastic Four, Hydra, Power Cosmos, Sinister Syndicate. Like none of these are... Based mm -hmm. off of any story wise, it's just KC is the one that really is just separate. Yeah, I mean, it's probably like the most popular, like alternate universe story that I can think of. Uh, it's Kingdom oh, Come. I mean, what, what is Hypertime? Was that a is that's a that's just a power, right? Or or is that an actual I, comic series? No, nah, I don't think there's anything called Hypertime. I don't think. I mean, Hyper Time was like, I think it was like a concept maybe that was in DC Comics. Uh, I don't remember a comic like, based on anything called Hyper Time. Yeah, I think uh, it's just, it, according to DC, like a wiki, it says Hyper Time was a storytelling device that Grant Morrison and Mark Wade used in 1999. Um, I was just curious because that's another team ability. I have no idea what Hyper Time is related to. I know it's usually for like, some uh, uh, Superman characters, and like we have Mr. Oz, I think has hyper time. Uh, I think he does. Does he have a hyper time, or did I dream that? Who? Uh, Oz? Uh, I don't think he has a TA. Yeah, Did Mr. He, Oz. No, wait, he has, yeah, he does. No, he, he does. has hyper he time and a Superman ally. Yeah. It's mostly yeah, like, yeah. I feel like it's, I guess, people that deal with time. Because you got Oz, you got... Multiverses and stuff, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of going off on a tangent, but that is just thinking about KC and having its own team ability. You know, you don't get that in Marvel. There's not a an overarching, like, alternate reality. Like, there's no battle world team ability. They just had a trait that they all shared, but they didn't give them yeah. a team ability. And those are old team abilities. They're from like, before cards existed. Yeah. Like... Uh, they came out early in the game, so. And I tell you, coming on here was a mistake because now I'm taking like, comics. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I actually, yeah. Well, I found Kingdom Come. I found it, and then I'm thinking, oh, there are two more Marvel series I actually did read. I read all of the Drax series that CM Punk had a part of. I read that entire run, and that was actually pretty good. Um. 
Well, I also was reading uh, The Unworthy Thor. I was reading that as well. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I was reading all that. So. Oh, man, yeah. But yeah, okay. I read all the tracks, so I really like tracks as well. That's cool. Right. Drax has an interesting backstory. Well, yeah. I've never, I've never read a solo comic, but. Well, I got into it because, I, as most of you guys know, I'm a big wrestling fan. So, and seeing Punk yeah. right, I was like, "Oh yeah, I want to pick this up." And he actually did a pretty good job with it. And uh, I forget, Bing Fang Fu made appearance in Drax as well, and so did, um, oh, what's his name? He's, oh, Terrax. Terrax made an appearance in that as well. Okay. And sp- speaking of Fin Fang Foom, I don't know if Alex had got this far or not, but uh, he makes a little bit of an appearance in uh, Immortal Hulk. Uh, a little a little cameo. If, you, if you're if you an eagle-eyed reader, you might see him. I have not read about Fin Fang Foom. I've read about him, like I know a little bit about him, but I have not actually read a comic where he's like a, a big deal. Isn't he a well, like a main Iron Man villain? Right. Yeah, I think he originally showed up in Iron Man uh, as a villain there. Uh, but like in, in Immortal Hulk, uh, there's some flashbacks to when Bruce Banner is a child, and he uh, he has a stuffed animal of Fin Fang Tomb that he's carrying around uh, in a couple panels. If you're, if you're looking, <laughs> look like. yeah, I like those little Easter eggs that they kind of put into. Yeah. Things call back to whatever. That was pretty cool. I thought, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got a, a keyword uh, of the of the, we want to talk about again this week, right? That, uh, yeah. Teams for yeah. So we're gonna do a keyword of the show where we build kind of a golden age version. Maybe you know, I know Jason typically goes more comic accurate. So we go golden age, and then we talk about maybe a modern one. Remember, this is a casual, uh, so we're talking about teams that you might play at your local event. Uh, that's why we talk about modern, because I'll know it, we might do a 400, 300 points event locally, and we're like, hey, just come in, and we're, you know, you have to have these keywords. So the keyword of this week is kind of going in line with Justice League Unlimited, the set that's that's dropping here soon, um, and that is Secret Society of Supervillains. Uh, this is one of my. I actually really enjoy this keyword. Um, doesn't have a ton. Me too. I, well, it has some good figures in it. A lot of really good figures. Um, now, I guess how many of the teams you built had Faust on it? Did any of them have Faust? I, in it? I didn't. I didn't put Faust on my teams. Now, I, I grant you, I like that figure. But like, if I played it just for a fun, I just wouldn't use the D twenty. I just used his style. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I thought that was more of a fair way to play him without having to worry about all the crazy things that the D20 did. His dial was decent enough on its own, I felt like, so I would play him without, without using the D20. Hmm. I don't know if I could... I don't know if I could stand to do, <laughs> do that. I love D20s. <laughs> I, th- I do think Faust is stupid broke. So I don't know. I guess if I would play him, I mean, I'd talk... Most of it, he's mostly banned at our local stores. Like, you just don't play him. Uh, I mean, I know he's retired, but Golden Age, we usually ban him anyway, just because he's just so broken. Um, yeah, game but I, <laughs> Yeah, I think if you could somehow tailor him down a bit, like if you could make his, like his worst powers, obviously, are the orange power with the energy dampeners. And then the, I mean, I don't even think the yellow one where you just choose a square and attack from, I don't think that's that bad. But no, I mean, if, but seriously, if you just use him without the D twenty, I mean, he's he's got psychic blast, he has perplex, he has willpower, he's got seven range, he's not horrible. Yeah, that's true. He phases. Um, I've played him that way a few times, and he's all right, uh, I think. Um, so the ATA for the Society, which is Secret Society of Supervillains. If you don't remember ATAs, ATAs, I think, were a fantastic add-on like they made it's i almost think we need to go back to ata's because i think the oh yeah yes because right now there's so much emphasis on theme team but it's all pumped into winning map winning the role and so you're getting theme teams that are like 10 plus 10 plus 12 which is insane 
So what you could do is you could cut that back, make a maximum, but then reintroduce team uh, additional team abilities for some of these theme teams to give you an extra flavor. It costs points, but this way you can, I uh, like for a society, whenever a character uses this team ability to tar, it, whenever a character using this team ability is targeted by outwit, you roll a d6 on a result of four through six. The opposing character that targeted your character cannot use outwit to target that character this turn. So basically, it's kind of like a protected outwit of sorts if you roll a four to six from that one character. So it's it's one of those that like it's a little bit of flavor. You depend you decide whether you want to pay that three points per person. Um, but it adds something like it's like, hey, I'm playing Secret Society while they don't have a team ability like we were just talking about. They have an additional team ability that you know, maybe make me want to play this particular keyword more or give me additional benefit. I would love to see these come back. Yeah, ATAs are one of the things I miss the most about modern age. Uh, I loved using ATAs when they were modern legal. Uh, now that we've lost all our IDs to fill in points and whatnot, I don't see why we couldn't have these again. Yeah, I, I think now's the perfect time to start thinking about bringing it back. Make sure they're balanced. We don't want crazy ones like, ah, what were the worst ones? Uh, uh, what was the uh, what was the strange one? Uh, Doctor Strange had one. The uh, oh, he did. I don't remember. Yeah, it was uh, Midnight Suns. Midnight. Oh, Suns. Midnight Suns is crazy. Yeah, where they you couldn't get targeted if you were in stealth. Like, uh... yeah, if they can already use stealth on their starting click, lines of fire may not be drawn to that character by opposing characters while on that click. So it's just you can't yeah. draw. Like that was a little too. That was a little too much for four points. Yeah, well, back uh, you can like copy team abilities with the Spider-Man team ability, and you'd give like someone who had traded stealth, then yeah. that would be the issue. Yeah, and you could equip a ring now to give stealth, so it's like, All right. okay. uh, but uh, you could always say printed in this case, or there's ways to make it work to add additional flavor. Now we're kind of getting something like this in the team up cards from uh, Justice League Unlimited. Uh, yeah. We're getting all those team up cards, which look ridiculous. Now we could talk about that in a, here in a second. It's just I, I was looking at Secret Society and I saw the team ability, and that's kind of what got me thinking about. Oh yes, I remember team abilities that were way better than they got credit for. And it, when they were ret retired, it's like no one really thought much about it. They were worried more about the figures than the actual team abilities that we were losing. So. So anyway, Jason, what you what are you building for Secret Society? Or do we want Jeremy to go first? He's Jeremy can go first. He's our guest. Uh, shoot the one out there. Okay. Do you want me to do modern or golden first? Or uh, modern? let's start with Golden Age. Let's let's do Golden Age. That's the that's the team I actually took the time to build. Modern and just threw together. So golden I took the time. I, I like playing golden a lot. Um so it's a four figures. Uh, the leadoff is uh, Low Dial Black Adam from, I believe, Trinity War, Justice League Trinity War at 150. Mm -hmm. uh, then I've got Super Rare, The Outsider from uh, Trinity War again. Uh, and then we got uh, Ragdoll, 50 point Ragdoll from The Flash. And then we got Signal Man just required in there from uh, yeah, Trinity War as well. So it's even 300 points. Huh. So what was nice. it? What, what was your thinking when it, were you aiming for more of a comic accuracy or are you just looking at team, figures and you're like, oh, this person's got some cool powers that I think will work well with this person? Or is it just you like those particular figs when you were playing these figures yeah. before? Well, Justice League, Trinity War is probably my favorite DC set ever mm -hmm. created. Uh, and I really like the Black Adam from that set a lot. Um, and of course, I liked I liked Ragdoll too. But my thinking was because I think out if I read this correctly, the Outsider has a uh, trait I believe. I'm looking at it right. Uh, yeah, prepare the way. Things give the Outsider a power action, place him and a friendly character in each other's squares. Unless that friendly character shares a keyword with the Outsider, he couldn't have been given an action this turn, and also can't be given an action this turn. So my thinking was, okay, I can swap him with Ragdoll. And Ragdoll has like a really crazy plasticity power, I believe, mm -hmm. which says uh, when, when Ragdoll is KO'd by the opponent's attack, that character modifies its attack value minus two for the rest of the game. 
even if this ability is lost. He's got plasticity lower down. Uh, it also has leadership right. as well. So I was thinking, all right, just throw Ragdoll out there for a for a sacrifice. Now they're minus two, and now they got to deal with 150 Black Adam. And then Signal Man is just there. He was just, he was just there for 50 points. He ate the picks and stuff, I think. Boot, wing, or I think maybe Dolphin? Maybe the pick, 23. Uh, boot symbol, fish symbol, shield symbol, or starburst symbol. The opposing character with the chosen symbol is targeted by or modify the character's defense minus one, or if single man is the attacker minus two at the beginning of the game. So, uh, just throwing him in there. But Bailey was focused around. I really like Black Adam. I like Ragdoll's effect. Let's just see if we can make that work. Yeah, I like it. And as far as modern, now that was just thrown together, um, literally. The, um, I did want to, again, I let up, let up with uh, modern Black Adam, low dial 100 point. Uh, and then we get into the new sets. Um, Copperhead at 40. Uh, then we did uh, Shade, I think, at 45? 45. Yeah. Shade at 45. The Wizard was, I think, it was an LE. Uh, he popped up as still modern uh, at 35. And then Black Manta at 75, 295. Uh, just kind of threw that one together. Um, just, again, just going with Black Adam and. Saying, okay, let's see what fits with the other part of the Yeah, I don't think there's really been a recent bad Black Adam. Like, we've gotten some Shazams that have been kind of hit or miss with right. how amazing mm-hmm. they are. But Black Adam, I mean, we've only had the one in Rebirth, the one in uh, Trinity War, and then... Crisis you know, had one. Yeah, Crisis had one, but that was a while ago. So we've only yeah. really had two. Um, which is sad because Black Adam's a pretty cool character, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I when I build Secret Society, I my first thought is okay, how can Black Adam fit into this? Either yeah. one of them, really. That's exactly, exactly how I thought. Um, that's just, the, and again, just, I went straight to Trinity War because I'm familiar with that, and I just really really like that set a lot. It had a lot of figures in there. I mean, it had. Um, it had a couple outsiders. It had Killer Frost that was in there. It had Vandal Savage. It had yeah. Desperado. That was fun. He was fun to play. And Shaggy Man. He's always fun to play as well. So, uh, and then the Flash actually had quite a bit too. Uh, like Captain Boomerang, Tar Pit. Um, just trying to stay away from the you know bad stuff like Turtle. But um, Gorilla Grodd is in there. Uh, yeah, there's actually quite a bit once you go into gold and just modern seems like a little. little... See, I don't know why you said that because for my Golden Age team, I I miss Turtle so much. Really? I, <laughs> I love Turtle so much. Oh, just how because annoying. He, and that's the point. He's just so annoying. And he hurts me too. So it's like I have to play by his rules. But like I just hated where it's just like I could just run across the board and do whatever. Or I could just taxi over. When we had a lot more taxis, like when we had Captain uh, uh, Sharon, the Captain America, the alternate one that lets you do an action after being taxied, mm-hmm. uh, those type of things, all those taxis, I'm like, man, this is the world where Turtle would love to be able to say, all right, you can come over, but you got to take an action, to- an extra action token. Like, I think he would be great in the current meta, to be honest. Um, but the team I built uh, for Golden Age. I did build Turtle, funny enough. Uh, Turtle, I did the World's Finest Wizard, because I he's always a, a, a stud. Because uh, yeah. he's got the prob, he's got all those other... The shape change where he puts out tigers. I'm a, I'm a sucker for pogs. So anything that's pretty cheap that could pop out a cool pog like a tiger, I'm all about it. Um, now, the unfortunate part, and this isn't going against Jeremy or anything like that, that Trinity War Black Adam, unfortunately, is slowly not holding up anymore. No, you're right. Like, him. like yeah. he, he's a stud at 270. Right. But 150 for five points, or five clicks, 10 attack, three damage. To me now, I look at him like, man, I want to play you so bad because it's such a good figure, but it's just not anymore, unfortunately. Um, so I, I tried to build him. Instead, I went with one set later, and I went with Atomic Skull. He's a super rare that just did not get a lot of play oh, at yeah. all. 
Ooh, okay. um, 150 points. He can. He only has one special power. He can use energy, explosion, poison. But then it says and deals penetrating damage. Just period. So like, if he uses poison, yep. if he attacks with energy explosion, he does anything that deals damage. It's penetrating. Just period. Um, he was highly overlooked in that set. I don't think anybody. I, there may have been one or two teams that tried him, but he's 158 clicks. Not great reducers, and we didn't have the objects like we do now. Um. But I think he's a great. He's got Superman enemy, and because of that, I'm also playing the the new uh, parasite that we're getting oh, yeah. in JLU. Fifty points rounds me out to three hundred. Uh, they both have Superman enemies, so that means I get the outwit because I think you have to have two to right. make Superman enemy work. So that means yep. Atomic Skull mm-hmm. can uh, Atomic Skull and Parasite could go out while Turtle and the Wizard will support. Um, no objects or anything like that. That's kind of that was kind of my go-to golden age because I just like turtle, I, and I know that seems counterproductive because uh, I I love speedsters, but right. speedsters just they had their heyday a little while ago until retail came out, and until retail is gone, speedsters will never be the same. So I wanted to go Professor Zoom. I just couldn't. I just couldn't. <laughs> uh jason before i go into modern how, what's your golden age looking like okay well um i really did gorilla grod from the flash set oh yes he i love i like gorilla grod i think that was a really good piece so i started my team off with him on 75 dial because uh, that's where he starts with the mind control power uh he gets mm-hmm. mind control and psychic blast and uh he can use mind control, and after that action resolve, he can use pin blast as a free action. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then, oh yeah, uh, if you try to mind control him, that would pin blast him, flex him. He can try to roll out roll you on a d6, and if he does, you can't uh, use that power. Uh, he can power this turn. Of course, he has you know he ignores elevated, and he... I, I figure he's just really fun. I think. Uh, and then, as you said, I love the wizard from World's Finest. That that poof power and uh, putting out po- tiger pogs is really cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. and uh, it, he has all the good support powers if you need to push him. Um, so uh, and then I went and finished the team out at, with Poison Ivy from World's Finest. It's kind of my tie up piece because um, she puts out those uh, puts out the smoke cloud. And then opposing characters that are uh, most, they have to break away from her smoke cloud markers, and if they don't, you deal them with penetrating damage. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, yeah, and she has perplex, she has poison, so that came out the two ninety uh, from my golden age team. Yeah, and you can throw an just object kind of, or something on there. Yeah, yeah, something. Just, they're just do things like I wanted to play. Like they don't really have anything that they mesh together around. around. I, I just like those figures. Yeah, that makes sense. I I love that Grodd. <laughs> Especially, like you said, at 175. I, he's not great at the lower of a point. Um, he'd be great in today's world with all the mind control, to be honest. like He'd be great out there to just say, nah, you can't mind control me, sorry. Oh, yeah. I love him, man. He's just really funny. He's, he starts running shots. With all that shot. And he's got double bolts and eight range. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a stud. All right, so for modern... Um, yeah, modern's a little bit different. I almost can't help but go with Starro. Just because he's such a great figure. He sees some meta play. Um, I know my friend Aaron Morgan tries to... Uh, he doesn't try. He does succeed in playing Starro. Um, but, you know, Starro was a thing at a year ago at the previous Rock Cup, with, which is the one Dan won. But he just mm-hmm. hasn't seen as much play lately. And I think that's a shame because he's he's awesome. Anytime I play a event, not anytime, but we had an event. I was trying so hard to find a way to play Starro because he's not as broken as the previous Starro. Because remember, we had that one Starro um, eons ago. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, uh, Justice League? Was it back in Justice League? Um there was a really bad star, bad as in like he was dangerous because uh, he could just do so much stuff. And this star we have isn't quite up to his snuff, but he does. You could do some crazy things with all the star fights. 
So I started there with my modern team. Uh, 100 points. Figured it was pretty pretty good starting point, essentially. Um, after that... What else did I go with? Um, after that, there's not there's not a huge amount of secret society. Luckily, we're getting some in unlimited. So, shade yeah. shades a pretty good pickup for forty five points. He could go out there and carry out um, some star fights if you need to. Black Adam is obviously a good pickup. Uh, you could honestly play a team of just Starro and Black Adam if you really really wanted to. I, I would probably play Black Adam at 100. That gives me 100 more points to play probably Shade. And that's about it. I was kind of struggling to figure out one for Modern because yeah. we, just, we just don't have much. So no, even if you were try- Yeah, if you, even if you were trying to avoid meta, there's just not... <laughs> there's not much out there for Modern. Now, we, like I said... We've got four coming in Justice League Unlimited, maybe one or two more. I think it's just the four. Um, so it's it's a keyword that hopefully will be on the up and up. What did you end up doing, Jason, for modern? Jeremy already told us his. So uh, well, I went with uh, I went with Starro also at a hundred points. Uh, he's pretty solid. Uh, the stuff I I kind of went with a Pog theme on this one. So uh, I went with Starro, and then I went to Harley Quinn set. Uh, for the 110 point Queen B, uh, who can power Ooh. action generate B drone bystanders. Nice. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Yeah. And then when uh, she uses mind control all, and uh, when she uses it, she has three targets, and she can also target all opposing characters adjacent to the original target. Uh, so she, uh, so she can uh, use a lot of mind control, and use a lot of paw. Uh, is what I went for. And then uh, uh, I, to fill out, I had 90 points left. Uh, so I just went ahead and put on uh, Reverse Flash, the uh, new WKO Reverse Flash that we got uh, this year. Or yeah, past year, I should say. He's not bad. His points are pretty decent. He just yeah, could, die. A, he could die pretty easily. Yeah. But. He could. He just had two percenses. Uh, but he does start, He has that out. Yeah, he has 13 move hypersonic speed. He can take tokens off himself. Hindering. So he can just kind of be a harasser while the, the pogs are tying you up and you're getting mind controlled by Queen Bee and Starro. Yeah. So tell me this. St- let's talk about Starro for one more minute and then we'll go into some JLU stuff. Um, everybody, like, it's almost as if Starro only has one dial, the 100 point dial. Mm-hmm. But he has other dials. He has two. He has the right. two, he has the two hundred point. Um, we won't talk about the one twenty five because that's pretty much straight up garbage. But the two hundred point honestly isn't bad. It just never sees play. Um, he starts. He's got about twelve. He's got twelve clicks for two hundred points. Sidestep eleven attack pensai eighteen impervious four damage ten range three targets like normal. Uh, he has tentacle attack, power action, make up to five close attacks. Characters may not be targeted more than twice during this action. After resolutions, choose one for each character that was hit during this action. Place that character adjacent to Starro, or heal Starro one click. So why is it that this does not see more play? Uh, I'd say probably because he starts out with Impervious, uh, instead of like Invincible, probably. That's fair. Uh, you can just side blast right through him because he just goes from imper- impervious down to uh, invulnerability. Yeah, he's like a seven, eighteen, seventeen. You could you could probably side blast through him pretty, pretty good if you wanted to try. If you needed to go up against him, hmm. That's I'd say that's one. Yeah, the hundred point one starts out with uh, invincible. Right. Yeah. And he has a stop click. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he drops from an 11 to a 10 pretty fast. Like, he has 11 in top click, and he has, like, one mid-dial. No, otherwise, he's just... Uh, I don't know. I, I think he just do more for 200 points than what he's doing. Yeah, I, I... I look at it, and for casually, I think it's absolutely playable. Um, oh, sure. It's just, I don't... Even in casual play, I never see anybody run anything but 
100 points Starro. No one ever plays the, the Retau unless they're literally going to play every Retau. Like a, a local um, was playing a team where he literally played almost every Retau possible and had and just ran Retau, um, which was very funny. I think he was doing it just for to have fun with that many colossal figures. But you know, he did. You never see Starro at his retail click because it's obviously it's not honestly not very good um to retail with him because he can make an attack targeting the chosen character uh then he could use mind control at no cost but it, but must target that character must include that character and he could target two more and we have a storm prime that does better i think than he does um because she can't be targeted as far so, I don't know. Starro might be one that you want to look at if you still have him. He does survive this upcoming rotation. Um, the only 18s that go is Blackbird because we lose all of the IDs, which, if you're a casual player, you're probably cheering. Um, if you're a meta player, you, you probably are cheering too. Most people I've talked to are actually happy IDs are going. I don't know if I've talked to somebody that has said, no, I'm so, I'm so mad IDs are the way of the world. I don't know. Jeremy, how do you feel about IDs? Uh, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> I've just, um, I've, I've, I started playing when there was like batteries and, you know, the, uh, right. The old Mandarin rings with the, uh, power plant. The power plant. Yeah. Uh, I prefer that more than I do the IDs. They were fun when they had the, uh, like the round table and the teleporter. Those were fun. Yes. But, just as a just as a single, just call in. Well, this is uh oh, this is for a good matchup against this, and oh, this is a good matchup for that. Which I know it gives utility to some teams, but I'm more like taking like here's this figure. Let's make this figure better instead of here. Let me just call in this guy and take care of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why I the and the the teleport was fun because it was just. I was a resource, and I just really like resources, which it looks like we're just for anything at all from that. Like I was telling Jason, it looks like it's going to be more of like a, of a limited meta, if that makes sense. We just have limited. Uh, that's what it looks like it's going to be. Yeah, it'll be fun, but um, I'd rather, like, if they're going to do anything with resources, I'd really enjoy that. Yeah, I think the emphasis that WizKids is putting now is more emphasis on on the board what are you actually playing you need to it has to be on the board um yeah there's because after rotation there's nothing on your sideline really except for shifting focus some random pieces or trouble alerts because you know some random pieces have some switching in and out but mm -hmm. usually it, it, it's just that now it's just trouble alerts or let's make trouble uh sideline like shifting focus because i know we're getting a new black widow that has a lot of shifting focus but that's that's it like our our sideline's about to open up drastically yeah yeah there's nothing you can just guarantee a call in like an id friends or just random at best and except for except for starro yeah it's <laughs> starro can manufacture them out but uh, other than that, you really can't depend on them. So you have your shifting focus. Who we have? Who do we have shifting focus right now? Cap, Iron Man, and Black Widow is coming out. And... Uh, yeah, because we just got the new Iron Man. Uh, we've got Captain America still from Battle World, I believe. Yeah, and that's it after rotation. It. Yeah, we don't have yeah. any other shift. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's it. Because we lost all the ones that were in Avengers Defenders of War last year. So I yep. uh did we get a was Wasp in that also? Yeah, I think Wasp was in Avengers Defenders of War also. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah, so. we don't we don't have any more shifting focus outside of that. Uh no, uh Captain Captain Marvel. We do have her movie one. She is that really shifting focus? Yeah, she has uh, a rare and oh, a common. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was thinking about the chase thing. No though. one ever plays them. Though. It's the 100-point the ones where she could, she goes close range and she goes to long range. Yeah, I, play, I played the rare one, uh, as a, in a, not the rare one, but the common one as a, in Popper. Was, she was fun. Yeah, I'm hoping her set gets a lot more play after rotation. Because I, I kind of like what Jeremy said when Captain Marvel was kind of his main 
Marvel person. Captain Marvel is mine also. I love Carol Danvers. She's probably my favorite. Um now I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of Civil War two. Uh I just don't like the haircut. Uh, it's, right. I'm one of those ones that's like that's not a haircut I'm a fan of. Um and that's probably very shallow of me. But I, I'm a Captain Marvel fan. I bought probably a case or more of her movie set. So I, I'm hoping that her movie set sees a lot more play because once ID figures are gone, you you lose that threshold of, hey, can it take six damage from Cyclops? And then, like, nobody wants yeah. to play that at a local event. Yeah. Being like, hey, yeah. all right, I've always got to worry about wave. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to have to worry about that. It's what we call, um, some of my locals call the cheese. Nobody wants to cheese an event and have, like, the broken stuff. Um, and IDs are essentially that. You're calling in stuff to have a bunch of stuff on the board that you're paying pennies for. So people who play casual, like us occasionally, it, the, the light is at the end of the tunnel. We're seeing it. We're seeing where you don't have to worry about uh, little Keith bringing in some crazy team that he saw win Worlds last year or some crazy team he saw here. You, now, you might get some people that still play meta but uh, at your local event, but you won't see the ID cards that are going crazy. Now, not not to say ID cards aren't fun in Golden Age. Like, There's some pretty fun combos you could do now in Golden Age. I don't know if I'd ever want to play in those type of events, but nah, I'm good. <laughs> like being able to play the new super rare blade with the uh, the Ronin ID card sounds hilarious to me. Yeah, well, like we said before, if I like want to bring those guys in like for a cameo appearance on my fun team, that's I think that's yeah. okay. But like, I don't want to go back to like Shield ID bringing in Nick Fury to kill me or. Uh, yeah. Green Crazy arrow things like that. Yeah, a green arrow coming in off an ID to shoot me to death. Uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> like I think, I think you could be allowed if you wanted to somehow keep the concept of IDs in your casual event. It should be exactly like what you were saying, Jason. Like have it where it's situational, like Wolverine ID. All right, if you're playing an Avengers team. All right, it makes sense that you call in Wolverine. That's basically what they did for a lot of things. Is Hey, we need. Hey, is Logan available? He's not doing anything right now, so he gets brought in. Like, it doesn't make sense yeah. for the like the Joker ID, Harley ID. That doesn't really make sense. I don't know when you're yeah. calling in the Arkham Asylum people. Um, yeah, unless I mean, unless you had an underworld thing, but even then, it's it sounds a little sketch. Here's yeah. the thing. You can do. Here's the thing you're gonna do. And this is it's going back to the comics again um, with the Harley Quinn Little Black Book. You could play a, like a Harley team with like the teleporter, and you can call in Jay Justice League members because she pretty much interacts with all of them during that run. That'd be neat. Yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think, and we'll, we're about to get to our one request with local on the eights. I think that's one thing. If you are a judge who's building events, try to thematically think of it that way. Like when we build, um. Like, for example, this pat yesterday, I think it happened. Calder uh, was Calder Ness was running a uh, a Captain America themed event, I believe. And so anybody, all Captain Americas could be on there, but he included the Cap Shield. And I think he included Inf Infinity Gauntlet, like he included versions mm -hmm. of Cap that had those particular items. So think about i know locally we do things off of comic accuracy sometimes so if you can find a comic panel where these people interacted and participated in some sort of event together then that's legal uh, not just oh i'm gonna play star with black adam well there's not a lot of instances that star and black adam were together fighting the justice league or something like that like that doesn't happen very often now i know star got the red lantern at some point um there's certain instances they may have been in the same room, but you have to like it. I don't know. It's that's one avenue that I, I kind of enjoy that we do mm -hmm. occasionally locally because it makes it very it's like a puzzle trying to find the right pieces that happen to fit together instead of saying, oh, 300 modern, just go play whatever you want. And like, there's benefits to both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
We try to do both every month. So um, at, yeah. during our show, we have a segment called Local on the Eights, where we review uh, different events that you may be having locally, and you can submit a build whenever we post a question thread with uh, what t- type of team or what build you would like us to do. Now, of course, given the circumstances of this virus, coronavirus that we're dealing with, obviously not a lot of teams, not a lot of events are happening. Um, but uh, Jason, I believe you said we did get one submission. Yes, yes, we did have one uh, submitted here. If I can get it to pull back up here. Uh, my Facebook app is uh, not cooperating at the moment. Yeah, so the concept behind Local on the Eights is just if you have a team that you're just, you know, sometimes you want a input on a team that you want to do for a local event or a you just want an idea of what we would build for that particular type of event. Okay. Or if Here you're or if you're a judge who is thinking, okay, this is the kind of format I want to go, but I want to know how badly someone could break it, it's not a bad idea to send it our way. What do you got, Jason? So, so John Carl posted uh, one of his favorite events to run is Masters and Minions. So it's 400 points, Golden Age, named theme team. Uh, only one figure on your team can be a named figure of 150 points or less. And okay. the rest of the name has to be, the rest of the team has to be real name uh, various. Uh, what would Ooh. you build for this scenario? So, I'm going to go ahead, Alex, if you... Yeah, 150 points. So your your maker has to be 150 points uh, or less, and the rest of your team has to be real name various. And it, there's no restriction on universe, right? So it's Marvel no. and okay. yeah, any or, or or other, you know, like it could be anything uh, else. All right, so I I think at this point, before I even pick my big guy, I'm looking at my various. To be honest, like I want to know mm-hmm. what options I have as various and that's what the benefit of realms has is you could click on various see what you have available Mm -hmm. and so just casually looking out there at some of the various i have i mean obviously the stronger figures that you might play is uh there's some good aim guys uh all the aim ones from black uh black panther and illuminati the uh, red squad white squad blue squad um those are strong i I really like the ex trainees and the ex students from uh xavier school true I like those. They're they're short dial, they're very small, but you can always flood with a ton of those and get nasty. Um, what was the figure that I liked the most? Oh, uh, this isn't legal anymore, which is fine. We're talking. Are we talking? Mo- did he say modern or golden age? Uh, he s- did. He says golden age. So anything's good. Okay. So, I and it, are we keeping theme team? Was yes. that the catch? Okay. Yes, theme team. Mm-hmm. Ooh. All right, you're gonna have to come back to me on this one. I, I saw a figure I did not see before. Um yeah, let me look at this real quick. Uh Jeremy or uh Jason, do you have one at the go or got one? Well, I... Well, I started with one. Oh, go ahead, Jason. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, because we ran a we ran something like this before, haven't we? It was called like but it was different. It's like 150 points or more, and then everything else had to be 50 points or less. Didn't we do something like that before? Yeah, we did We did a similar thing where you had like a boss and then uh, you had his minions, but I, didn't, I don't think I had the, quite the same restrictions right, right. Yours on, was, on there. Yeah, I, I remember it was like it was something like that, but it was like 150 points or more. Like one figure would be 150 points or more. He's considered like the boss or whatever. And then everything else had to be 50 points or less. So, like, my mind went, went to immediately, like, Dark Side and the Parademon. Because we have a few oh, different yeah. parademons, parademons. But Dark Side, uh, the lowest one you can find is 200. So then I went to uh, the Court of Owls. You can run Talon and a bunch of different Court of Owl initiate, initiate. And then Court of Owls Assassin with him as well. Because he's Talon sub 120, and the Court of Owls are like 10, and then the Assassin 70. Yeah, I like that. So, uh, how many quarter owls do you get? Uh, let's see. Talon's one. Tw- how many? Po- what's the build total? So it, it's four hundred points. Four hundred points is the build. Okay. So if you ran one talent at one twenty, let me just bam, just one quarter of owl at ten points and see what happens. Uh, 
four hundred. Oh my gosh, I'm at like two ten, and there's one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. That's at two ten. That's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There, uh, you can get like twenty figures. It looks like I'm at two seventy, and I have to scroll all the way down to get all of them. Like you can, if you, but you can switch it up. And there's different ones. There's, uh, I think they're both just the same. Yeah, one's female, one's male, so you can switch. And then the Court of Owls Assassins has. Uh, sidestep, uh, poison, willpower, two damage. It says Court of Owls Assassins can use blade, cl- blades, claws, fangs, and stealth. The Court of Owls Assassins can use Mastermind, but only to transfer damage to characters with the Court of Owls keyword. So you can throw a couple of them in there. Uh, they have the Batman. Well, they all have the Underworld, so they can carry each other, well, except for Talon himself. And then Court of Owls Assassin has Batman, Enemy, and Underworld. So, and then, of course, their real name is various as well, so. Um, yeah, that, that was always, that seems fun, and not, not a lot of people played that, and, uh, that was, that's my thinking anyways, that'd be fun to play. Yeah, that's, this is an interesting build, because, all right, I mean, just because, not, I mean the, the, the event build, because you're asking for, that means 250 points of generics, essentially, right? Yeah, you have a pretty good army. Yeah, that's <laughs> a ton. So, like, I'm looking at something like Yondu. Um, the hundred point Yondu that does the the whistling arrow attack because I love the Ravengers. So you can play uh, t- the twenty point Ravengers where you get to pick their their points, and so you have one that's running shot, energy explosion, one that's charge blades, one that's sidestep poison, and the other is uh, leap climb, and they give an action token when they hit. But then you have support, you have battle fury, you have enhancement and empower. So, like, you have a lot of ways to beef up Yondu, and then a lot of ways to heal him up or heal each other up. Like, I'm looking at that thinking, all right, 100 points for Yondu. That gives me 300 points. So that's 115 Ravengers, essentially. If you wanted to pay 20 to pick their dials, you could change that up. Um, Besides that, I mean, I think aim is probably your best bet, I think. Yeah, I was gonna reach for the for some aim guys. I was gonna go back to Captain America set and grab the Modoc. Oh, I can't. No, he's one sixty. Crap, I can't play him. So I could go for the new <laughs> Modoc. I go for the new Modoc. Then you could do, you could pick a pretty mean aim squad with like the new Modoc. He's like ninety points, so you still have a ton like a a ton of stuff. Three hundred and ten points of minions, so you can get a bunch of the aim guys. Uh, the red, the white, the blue. I'd even go back to like the Hulk set and get the aim agent, the 003 aim agent. Uh, cause, uh, I don't know. I had a lot of success with that guy. I don't know. He just, I had some that just did really good for me today. And, oh, uh, never mind. Don't forget it, guys. I have the answer. This is okay. A, this is a casual. I mean, it's kind of casual. The obvious answer is you're going to be playing Nimrod at 150 points. And then you're going to be playing a bunch oh. of Sentinels and a bunch of Friends of Humanity. <laughs> and you're just going to be playing all of those guys. Because Sentinels from the recent Dark Phoenix set have various real names. So 25 point of those Sentinels. You could throw some Friends of Humanity in there. Um, you could even throw in... Uh, no, I think that's it. Just mostly those two. But you can play 150 point Nimrod, and yes, you can argue Nimrod is at 150 points probably isn't casual, but he's one of those figures that people just enjoy playing, you know. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think Nimrod might be pushing it a little too much on that envelope. What about uh, uh, does Master Mold have like a low dial that you could play? Um. Uh... I don't think Master Mold has the Sentinel keyword. Does he not have it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm Maybe. going pure. I was going purely off the Sentinel keyword, um, and that may no. have been before they had the Sentinel keyword. But he, but he has robot keyword. Um, named theme team. Is oh, I said name. Page. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this man. This is a this is a cool event because now I'm my mind's racing. Like if I knew. Like okay, so we I I think one of the questions, let me look. Um uh do, 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 like one of the questions is um that I get a lot is the all right, all right, where do you draw the line between casual and fun foul? This is for from George Himes. So this kind of goes into what mm-hmm. I'm about to talk about is 
you know, if you play both upper competition and then you like casual events, where do you draw the line between the two? Because it's hard. Because you are you see the cool figure like, for example, Nimrod. And if I'm sitting here thinking it's Golden Age and I can play Nimrod, well, Nimrod to me is definitely pushing the envelope. He's a cool figure, but mm-hmm. uh, I mean, he's... I mean, he, I guess he could be taken out pretty easily at 150, maybe. Um, he's not as strong as he used to be. So you just have to weigh, um, if you're playing Golden Age, weigh how far something has fallen. Like we talked about Black Adam earlier. If I see you sit down with Trinity War Black Adam, at first glance, I'm going to be like, oh, no, you're you're here to play. But then if I really look at him now, he is not nearly as good as he used to be. It's like we have... Uh, nostalgia like we remember things you know if you re- think yeah. about cartoons and games you used to play like in our heads super mario for the nintendo looked amazing and when we look at it now compared to today's graphics well yeah it's a lot lower graphics than what we remember like super mario 64 yeah. we didn't ar- imagine super mario 64 as this blocky super mario that was running around in 3d in our head he was amazing looking because that's the times well nimrod or black adam while they're still somewhat dangerous they're not as dangerous and so at some point they are going to fall down to a casual level where they could play be played fine without having to make your opponents groan that you brought this to their event so i always locally we have a thing where we just say hey we we bring two teams to every event that we're unsure whether people are going to go uh, Mm -hmm. hard or not go hard. And if we see someone bring something hard and that they're actively going to play it, then we switch teams before the event starts. I don't know. Jason or Jeremy, how do you guys draw the line between casual and fun? It's it's, it's hard. It's hard. Like we play with some people, uh, Jeremy and I, we play, we, we, we play in the same, in the same store. Uh, with some people that are pretty hardcore, <laughs> we do. We do. Uh, so, I, I, I guess really a lot of it depends on like who your play group is and what their mentality is, and you know, you know how those people like to build and enjoy things. If you play with them, long enough. So I think a lot of it depends on, on them. Uh, we could probably do a lot, more, a lot meaner stuff at our store than wouldn't be frowned upon because of the other people we play with, <laughs> necessarily. Right. Uh, I don't know. Like, if I'm really gonna build a casual team, like, I don't just try to. I don't try to find a team that just really synergizes well. Like I said before, I just kind of put together either like a comic book team, or I put together like dudes I want. To play together, um, I don't know that playing a like a one man army in its in and of itself is just a like a fun battle, you know? Right. Uh, like I like I enjoy like high point powerful figures. Like, like I used to like the new Doctor Doom in the in the new starter set. I really like. Mm-hmm. I really like him. I'd, I'd play him. Like, uh, I don't see any reason not to. I think he can be taken down by a whole team, even though it's trouble. Uh, I, I think it just depends on who you're playing with. Ask yourself, what do you think those people would think about? Because every store has those people that get over um, and antsy when they see, like, they come to a casual event and they see meta esque figures, they get antsy. And I mean, if you're going to a casual event and you're expecting casual and someone's bringing hardcore. Unimind, for example, is a popular one that is you I don't know of a way you can play Unimind as casual. Essentially. There's I don't think there is a way to play him casual unless you were doing like no Eternals. I think that is mm-hmm. the only way that he could be played casually. Yeah, probably so. So it, it's you just gotta know the people you're playing with, who's going, talk it out with them. I mean, uh, we hold discussions like we have Facebook chats and whatnot where we're like, hey, we're going who all's going? And then we'll be like, OK, are we going to go hard or go easy? Like we had a new person, uh, a uh, he's a bit younger. I think he's in his teens going to event last week. And so we all said, hey, 
there's a new player coming. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> let's ease off a bit. Uh, um, you mm-hmm. know, he can see the cool hard teens, but not let's not like make him think this game is impossible the first go around. So it really is, Jason. I think, like you said, who are you playing? How much mm-hmm. communication do you have between those people? And maybe pack a secondary team that maybe you thought it wasn't that. Maybe you thought your team was not that bad, but looking at everyone else, you're like, oh, yeah, it's way worse than the other teams. Not that I'm yeah. trying to say scout your teams out, but it's casual. People get yeah. there, they pull their teams out, and then they play, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you never know what you're going to do to maybe, you know, hurt somebody's feelings if you play something like that, or if you got a new person there and they, they get trounced by something like that. Are they going to come back? Or they, they have a good time? Do they not? Right. right. You know? Uh, like I think, like I, I remember when I think the first game me and Jeremy ever played. You remember this, Jeremy? Yes, I do. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I show we showed up. It was just me and him. Uh, like we, I, I had I had just gotten a bunch of figures from like back when they had gravity feeds to go with the main set. This was from uh, I guess it was Trinity War actually, right? It was. Yeah, it was. So I just whipped out some like Justice League dudes from the Trinity War gravity feed set. Uh and like and Jeremy had like what you have uh twenty ninety nine Spider Man oh, and, uh, and uh I the Mandarin what, in flight. I think I did that. Yeah. And like I just like we, I just I didn't think about building the team. I just pulled out some of this stuff and made enough points to fill the to fill up the point value we were playing at and we played. And like <laughs> I think I wound up like crit hitting Jeremy Spider Man off the top of a mountain on elevated and like <laughs> I killed him and I don't yeah. know. We had uh, I, I, like he. I think I don't know how he felt about it at the time. But... <laughs> uh, like that's one of my favorite figures, believe it or not, is that Spider Man twenty ninety nine that has the stop clicks when he picks up Mjolnir. Um, it, uh, it 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 was heartbreaking. It was just like oh, oh that oh well, because <laughs> I forget. I don't even remember what else I played with him. Like I don't even remember. Like I just remember. Green Arrow setting up there. I think it was like one twenty one or one twenty two, and he just popped them and just. Yeah, see, I was, I was using I was using that Green Arrow that could do all the the, the gravity feet set that could do all the pick up pick an arrow and like all this improved targeting stuff. Yeah. Like, and it just came out. We didn't really I didn't really think about how great he was like meta wise or whatever. But I just, I just slapped him and like Firestorm and Aquaman down there, <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was. It, was, it, it might have been a little overkill, but. <laughs> well, to be fair, at the time, you probably didn't know how good he was. Uh, later on. Yeah, it was literally the first time I ever played it, and it, it, but it gave us a memorable story. We still remember to this day yeah. about poor twenty nine ninety nine Spider Man getting killed on the top of a mountain and falling to his death. <laughs> I think I avenged him one time. I, I always told Jason, I was like, I'm going to avenge Spider Man 299 one time. He's going to come back and beat you. I think I've done one time with 29 <laughs> Jason. So he, he guys, he guys, retribution. But, you know, you just kind of like, don't just have fun. Don't try to, you can play the team in a fun way, even, and not try to just like make the most optimal moves and just sit there and try to figure out set up a strategy you can come up with. I don't know. I just like gonna print this run and punch people in the face. Yeah. Sometimes. Like and like and like I mentioned in the last episode, what I do because I don't have a ton of time to play hero clicks, you know, because I have a lot of kids and stuff. Um, is that if I'm going to a casual event, I'll have fun, but maybe I will try something that I've been wanting to try in meta, some sort of uh like for example, I wanna just see Legion. Uh, this is a couple months mm-hmm. ago. I wanted to see how Legion, a double Legion team would be. Not meta, and this is Wild Dial Legion. Um, it, wasn't yeah. very, it wasn't very good, <laughs> but <laughs> it, I, I don't do like the full meta team. I'll try little little things here or there. Like I'll try, if I'm playing, you know, I've never played Kobik before. Well, she's not meta on her own. Like she doesn't just break games on her own. It's if you have mm-hmm. Trader and a bunch of other cosmos. So I built non-theme and I had some other generally fun pieces with her just so I can try her out, get used to moving her around, trying her different abilities. But I wasn't going insane with all the combos to just make the other person miserable because I wanted to have fun, go to a casual events, still try to win. I wasn't like not trying to win, but I use casual events as a meta player to 
try maybe one or two different combos that I would try on my meta team that isn't groundbreaking on its own. It is if you add it with all this other ridiculous stuff I could do, like Kobic switching Mystics and taking Mystics damage, and then I retail. Like, I didn't do that, but I tried moving her around with the blue cube and how it would be to outwit or shape chain, you know, all of that stuff. So right. if you're a meta player, like, I, I emphasize, like, don't go hardcore all the time at every casual event, but if you want, if you have limited time, then try to find an aspect, like build a team out of one figure on your meta team. Like if I'm really into Captain Marvel, the super rare from the cap set, okay, I'll play one Captain Marvel at 150 and then I'll build something else, not two Captain Marvels and uh, all these other figures. Like just play fun with her, but it allows you to actually play her, put her on the map, get used to moving her around, figure out her limitations, while at the same time, you're still playing a fun casual event. That's how I approach certain casual events, especially when we get closer to big tournaments. And I, I can't play 300 Modern at my local event if it's not 300 Modern. So I build around that kind of thing to kind of make sure I'm still casual, if you will. And that, I guess that kind of leads into our next question that uh, Matthew Groenheide uh, posted. Uh, so what advice would you give to casual players who want to begin attending more competitive events but don't know where to start? Uh, what advice would you give to competitive players who are trying to play in more casual environments but feel like they're risking alienating themselves by bringing a competitive gun to a casual knife fight? Uh, I really enjoy playing in both the casual and competitive sides of HeroClick, but some folks seem to fit into one of those two categories and really struggle to find their place in the other. So I think you you got the uh, meta player that's playing in the casual event uh, thing down there. Wow, I, di I didn't read that question. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it inadvertently answered it. Yeah. But if, like, if you're a casual player who wants to start attending more competitive events, just, uh, you know, know the rule book, know the pack backwards and forwards, know the team you're going to play, whatever it might be. Know what it can do. Practice it. You know, and then just get out there and, and try some tournaments and see what ha and see what happens. Yeah, to check out the win. Go to some WKOs, uh, rock tournaments. Um, I, I would say as someone, you know, I remember when I started playing competitively. I mean, you, I would go to your first event and set yourself realistic expectations. And realistic expectations for most people is making the cut, not winning at all, but usually just making the cut making the cut to top eight top 16 top 32 top four you know that's your goal is to try to make the cut and if you don't make it cool figure out what you learned from the event try to figure out okay what did i do wrong because you're going to make mistakes uh, even the best players make mistakes now like all the time it's just how do you recover from those mistakes what did, how well do you know your team like jason said and it's just you know go out there and I definitely what you don't want to do if you're a casual player going to uh, competitive is to just find a cookie builder, a cookie cutter build and just start playing it. Like yeah. just say like, oh, yeah, I love, you know, I I want to get a competitive. Uh, somebody wins with Unimine. Let me play Unimine. No, 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 no. Find a figure that you enjoy that is making splashes. So maybe you like Kobic. Maybe you like Tri Sentinels. Like you just play, bought one. And you're like, this is a cool piece. Like go out there and see winning lists, um, and see if you find one that has figures you enjoy playing uh, to casually, and try playing around with that team. Uh, you will find a team that has something. Yeah, or, or in the current situation we're in right now, Roll Twenty is a great resource. There's lots of experience players are happy to show you the ropes and give you some practice if Absolutely. you just ask yeah. yeah and don't be afraid to try something unconventional uh definitely don't be afraid to try something unconventional unconventional teams are the ones that shake up the meta the most is teams that they're not expecting is your lord chaos master orders that are just showing up randomly like you just experiment talk to people don't be afraid to reach out to any of the the people's names you see on these winning lists i know a lot of people are open to talking i would love to just talk clicks with you just to send a message or say hey what do you think about this team what do you think about that like mm -hmm. very open community 
even though it's a very competitive community, it is a very open community. Like I talk about my Ultron team with probably two to three people daily about, you know, should I change this? Should I change that? So go out there and talk to people. We're not scary. I mean, don't talk in person right now. That's scary. But (laughs) on Facebook, feel free to talk to people or Discord or whatever you want to do. All right. So uh, next question is from McConnell Lamar. What's your second favorite Golden Age keyword cheating figure? Doug is the only right answer for number one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Doug was a good uh, was a good figure. Uh, I I enjoyed him quite a bit from that the Thor the Dark World set. I'm not even sure what all the keyword cheating figures are really. Uh, so what keyword cheating? What is that like? Like I'm, I think the question I think of like is it Eternity that we copy all of the keywords or? Yeah, that one or like mm-hmm. uh, Magneto, the Age of Apocalypse Magneto, who can make mm-hmm. a certain point figure uh, an X Men. Oh. Or like our, our current one, Steve Rogers, who can give people Avengers or Shield uh, right now. Yes, yeah, uh, so, but he's saying specifically Golden Age. So, is there anything older that's not around anymore? That you guys can think of. I mean, Magneto is well, probably the more common one I can think of. Well, Doug, of course, that he was talking about from Thor: right. The Dark World. Uh, there is one uh, from Legion of Superheroes that lets you uh, make people a Legion of Superhero keyword. Uh, character. Uh, I had to go back and find. Was that it a was... figure or a ring? I know the. Didn't no, the no, it was a... no. There was a figure that did this that I'm thinking of. Oh gosh, where is it? Um, I would say okay. This is this might be cheating. Keyword cheating. Um, I mean there is the Legion of Superhero Flight Ring, that is a relic, and it does give this character the Legion of Superheroes keyword the wing symbol, and may carry f- friendly characters regardless of their speed symbol. And it gives them toughness and defend. Wow, that's... I can't re Yeah, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot for five points. Um, but it was a relic, so you kind of have to... A three through six relic, so that's even better. Um, yeah, characters, man. Uh... There's one I really like. Um, it's not... I don't know if it's the yeah. keyword shading. Uh, but there's one that's um, Silver Sable from Deadpool. She has wild pack of symbol. Jason friendly characters that share a keyword with Silver Sable can use the team ability she's copying. I always thought that she was pretty neat when she does that. She's not really, I guess it's not really keyword cheating, but it's like team ability cheating, I guess you'd say. So like maybe she, let's say she's playing with a Heroes for Hire Deadpool and she copies, back in the day, she copies Mystics and he can use Mystics. Something like that. I thought that was yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, what I what I was thinking of was back from the slosh set, the uh, gravity feed for that, the uh, number two hundred one, two hundred two, two hundred three, Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, and Lightning Lad had a welcome to the Legion trait. Uh, so when you build your force, choose a character of fifty points or less, and that character gains the Legion of the Superheroes and the Wing symbol. This game, and if your force includes other characters with this trait, you may increase the value of your chosen character by fifty points. If this character doesn't use that trait, so you can get it somebody up to a hundred. If you use all three of those characters and keyword and flight ability, the wing symbol, yeah, yeah. There's some there's some interesting ones out there. Um, was there a shield one outside of the new Steve? I can't remember. Man, that's a hard one because that's that's hard to look up. You'd have to look up like powers, like on realms. And say if a special power has something that has keyword in it, but then there's a lot of powers that have keyword in it, so it's yeah, it's it's hard to look that up. Like I was trying to figure out how to do it, but I couldn't. There's like GW Bridge. Remember that guy from Deadpool? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, he would get. Yeah, when uh, you build your force, if GW Bridge is exactly four, the characters share a keyword. You can choose a friendly character with a point value of one fifty or less, and that character has the shared keyword. Yeah, that's not a bad one, and he could do that for uh, shield. For shield. That's his be- yeah, that's mm-hmm. his best best bet is shield. So, I would say for me, my favorite one is probably Magneto because I think he's the only one that gave people X Men, and so 
I think just have yeah. I, I think he's just the most powerful one and the mo- most fun one. He really didn't see a lot of ton of a, a ton of play until right before he retired. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy Eternity. I'm just getting any keyword like on any team is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, I remember building a Gotham City Underworld team and thinking, well, Penguin Joker beat your new teammate Eternity, and it's just in my head, I'm like, yeah. ah, that just doesn't feel right. I was like, uh, it works, but you know, it's one in my head I would build but never play because it just didn't feel like it. I mean, it's obviously not comic accurate, but it's definitely one that just doesn't didn't feel right. If that makes sense, right? But I don't know. I enjoyed it anyway, <laughs> even though it wasn't quite right. <laughs> I still enjoyed it. Uh, and then he has a second question. Uh, says, what do you think are the three biggest hurdles to WizKids having an official Golden Age format? Uh, uh, rules, rules, rules. That's what my answer was going to be. Rules, rules, rules. Because they don't cover rulings on Golden Age figures anymore. Uh, it's it's really, really impossible to do that. Yeah, the only thing they could possibly do is start a gold, a new Golden Age when they started the newer rules. Um, yeah. And yeah. just say this is going to be the new golden age. Because, I mean, think about it. At one point, we stopped golden age at, what, Superman? Or what, before Oreo dials? Like, at some point, we made the decision these are no longer golden age. They're before that. So there would have to be some sort of renaissance where that happens again. Where they're like, okay, everything before Age of Ultron or Superman Wonder Woman or something. That's not going to be included well, in golden age. It's too old. Yeah. I mean, there was one Golden Age World Championship, which is where we got the uh, Harley Quinn figure with the uh, in the seated Harley Quinn and dancing with that guy. That was Jake Williams won that, uh, and I don't think they'll ever do it again. I I think they might be open up to the idea if there's a way to handle rules appropriately. So yeah. I guess it's just. I mean, I mean, maybe when new cards came out. So that was what Spider Man, Sp- Amazing Spider Man, yeah. Not Amazing, but Superior Foes. Um, no, Superior Foes, yeah. So maybe starting at Spider Man going forward, because you got the new cards, so you had new things, and all the wordings were right. Because that was twenty sixteen. Like, no, we got new power. We got new. We got yeah, new rulings in twenty seventeen with Thor. So it'd have to start with Thor. I mean, honestly, they have no incentive to even worry about this. It, it, yeah. it, make, it makes them no money. Uh, it would take an immense amount of time to try to figure out all the rulings. For them. Uh, they took all those old wind rulings down back in those days. And, you know, a while back when the new rules went through. Like, I, mean, I, I just don't ever see anything they're concerned with, ever. Yeah, I guess for me, it's. The way I see it is there is some benefit to Golden Age because they bringing people, there is a wide variety of players who refuse to play Modern Age, who refuse. Mm-hmm. And HeroClix, WizKids is missing those players from going to events, going to nationals, going to worlds. Those people aren't showing up. They won't necessarily go just to play BRs. But if you introduce a heavily monitored, almost like Majestics, but not Majestics, some sort of format like that, where you can, you have your rules starting point, which at this point we've determined is probably Thor. That's when they last redid it. And say from this set going forward, we're naming it this. This is the new modern. Everything in here is legal, except for Faust. They'll probably still ban Faust. Um, and, th- and they can have a ban list. I don't know. It, it would take a lot of effort. But the fact that they're looking to branch out into different avenues, like Skirmish, which I don't think has really taken off. Um, Not yet, anyway. Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking for other avenues to draw more people into the game. Because if you get people to come to the bigger WKOs, for example, then they're going to see more product and they might get more interested in the newer... I mean, they now might be the best time to do it come rotation because ID cards are gone away. 
And that's what a lot yeah. of people became sticklers on was they hated IDs. Now, you probably have to lose retails too because the people who hate IDs most likely also hate retail. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. There's so, the golden age boggles my mind. There's so much stuff. In. Yeah, Such yeah. crazy combos. Like, like there, there, there's some really like you were saying there. There's some crazy combos um, between now and then. I mean, Working on some of the older cards are weird. There's no dolls in the back of the older cards. So, like, let's say you get a newer player what a golden age, and you guys look at their card. There's no dial like. That might throw somebody off. Uh, yeah. like I can I can control that at my kitchen table fairly easy. Uh, <laughs> but right. uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm just gonna stay out of that out of that fight. <laughs> yeah, I think there's demand for it. I think people would be interested as long as you could control the crazy rulings. Right. Uh, I, I'd be interested in that, but again, it it would have to be like. Well, resources in there, are they not in there, it's more limited, it's ready cards, what's banned, is this, you know, it'd have to be really, like, specific for me, like, what I, what I would be willing to play. But I do like Golden Age a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we'll see. I, I think there's room for it. I think if enough people clamor, then WizKids might look into it further. I know that, I mean, I feel like the the judges that we see at WizKids events are more, they're, I don't know, I feel like they talk, they're able, you know, they're doing the primer now for every new set before mm -hmm. uh, before the win comes out. And they're, the win is more active because they're able to post things on there and get a result pretty quickly. So maybe something's working in that and maybe they're trying to do something with rulings. The prep going forward. I think if we were to ever get a Golden Age, though, it's not going to be the Golden Age you're wanting. It's not going to be back to the Flash and Trinity War. It's probably going to be something more recent going forward because that's the only way to, that's an easy way to curtail all of the rules issues is just say, all right, this is the starting point for our new Golden Age. And our new Golden Age is small now, but five years from now, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. It's going to be huge. But right now, you have to deal with the fact that it is like four sets out of, off of modern or something, you know? Like, there has That's to be a starting point. That's probably the most feasible. Form. Yeah. Probably the most feasible. Right. Um, and then we, have one, we have one last comment here uh, on the thread. This K posted that some podcasts make fun of people playing solo games with clicks, but I often enjoy setting up two forces and battling in on. <laughs> I know enough of my comic board to be accurate on how characters act in dice rolls, bring in the unexpected that makes it great. No apologies here. I don't I don't make fun of people playing solo games. At, at, at this point in time, in the situation that we're all in right now, that's probably a pretty good idea. <laughs> yeah. If you, want, if you want to get your actual physical figures out and, and handle them, playing a solo game is probably most people's only option right now. And I mean, so... Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Well, like, I, I read that comment. The first thing I thought was, when I was learning the game, that's what I did. I, I'd bring up my mat, I would build two forces, I would play against it myself, and just try to get the interactions down, try to get the movements down. That, that's how I taught myself when I wasn't playing in our venue, was just putting the figures on a map, what position do they work best in, where do I want this figure, where do I want to place this one, how can I get this power to work the way I want to? That's how I learned how to play, essentially. Yeah. And I think we all did that at some point. I mean, even now, uh, playing a competitive, everybody does that every time. Like, you could sit down and I can make my team and say, okay, I want to see how my team does against Wales, like one of Tyler's teams. So I'll sit the team down. And it isn't me, it's still me playing against myself, but in my head, it's me playing against Tyler. So I'll be playing my team, and I'll say, okay, what, is Ty what would Tyler do in this scenario? And then I move the pieces like he would. And now, I obviously, I don't know his thinking, but that's, that's how I rationalize me playing by myself, is, all right, I'm getting practice against these teams. And, and, and that's just me competitive. Now, if I'm thinking more casual, I mean, we're getting... 
the the Fantastic Four, which you guys have shown, I think, some of the uh, mm-hmm. scenario cards out of there. Like, there's a lot of opportunities. Like those, are, I was thrilled seeing those scenario cards in the the starter set. At being able to say, "Hey, you play these figures, and this happens," you can play that on your own, and it could be, "I'm playing yeah. Fantastic Four against that's, Doom." That's good. That's good stuff. Uh, and the tur- the turtle starters that they put out a while back had scenarios like that in it. As yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. And, and there's a lot. If you guys keep up at all with tabletop gaming, there is a lot of board games out there that tailor also to single people that can be played with other ones. Like one of the biggest games in the past couple of years is Gloomhaven, huge, huge game, um, a D and D s game that you could play one player, and it's built to be able to be played one player, but you could play it with everyone else too. But it's a, it's a format in tabletop gaming that has gotten a lot more, like there's a lot more out there available. It's not just a choose your own adventure. It is a, the game sets up like this and this is how you play it. Um, Because I mean, sometimes you're by yourself and you have nothing else to do and you don't want to play a video game. You'd rather sit down at a table. Well, get out some hero clicks and you could be sitting there watching yeah. a, your favorite Justice League Unlimited show, and you're like, hey, I want to put these figures and see how they would do on the board and see who would win. So it's not crazy. Definitely don't think you're crazy. Anybody, anything else you guys would like to add about that? Or No, I don't think so. I, I haven't personally done it. I mean, I, I may be doing it sometime soon because I don't think we're any of us are getting out of the house anytime uh, soon, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be itching to have my figures out to do something with. I think. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't see a better time than now to start. <laughs> so not uh, not to go back to what we were talking about before, but uh, I'm sure people are screaming at us, or were screaming at us. We completely forgot that there are shifting focus in Star Trek. Oh, that's right. There's Data and War. How did I forget that? <laughs> yes, there's a there's a lot of sh- yeah a lot of shit focus in there, and for um, I'm sorry, blanking on the name that format we were talking about, Star Trek would also be pretty good for that, um, because you could do Starfleet. Now the problem is, the Star Trek doesn't have a lot of big heavy hitters, so your biggest issue with that is finding someone 150 points or less you want to be your main person. Uh, there's the mm-hmm. Because Q doesn't count, um, because he doesn't have a name theme team, but you could go something like that cosmic, uh, William Riker. Yeah, he's a hundred points, I think. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's even more. I think he's one twenty five. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a beef boy, if you will. Um, or you could go with one of the higher point John Luke Picards, um, that we got in. Not the first one, but yeah, no, the the oh. which one did we get those in? And the resistance of feudal set is yeah, there's a 125 uh, card in the chair, um, uh, that you can get and play for Star Trek. Yeah, League. there it is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, and then think... the commander Riker is 125 because he's the Q commander Riker. Yes, you know, now that we're talking about it, I think I'd go with the boy. And a bunch of Borgs. Ooh, that's a good that's a good point. The Borg Queen is one that I've been wanting to play for such a long time. So, I mean, she's only 100 points, so that's not a, a ton. But you could play her, and then you have... Well, okay, well, that's the problem, is because the Borg drones don't have various... Uh, Their real names are N.A. So you would have to really... That would be one where I would bring it up to my judge and yeah. say, you know, they're Borg, so they don't technically have names. So that's why it's not various, but it's actually N.A. And it, honestly, if I was running this type of event and someone came up to me and said, hey, I just want to bu- run a bunch of different Borg, I'd probably be okay with that because the general concept of, hey, these are generics. Well, they are generics. They're Borg. I mean, you could argue they're yeah. all one mind, but they're all generics yeah. with the yeah. Borg Queen. So yeah. I would probably allow it, but if you're going strictly by the event details, it probably wouldn't be allowed. Um, but Starfleet, uh, Ferengi, not probably not Ferengi, but Klingon, uh, you've got a lot yeah. of options, I think, 
and that avenue. So if you're building for that, don't forget Star Trek. Um, they don't have a ton of heavy hitters in Star Trek. That's the only downside. So you might have to go like a hundred point, like for Romulan, you'd have to go a uh, uh, Charvanek, who's only a hundred points. Mm-hmm. Um, but pretty good for a hundred points. And then you could play Centurions, Lieutenants, Commanders, Legionnaires, Sub Commanders. Like you have a lot of options, and that that's what you want is you want uh options, tons of options of choose yeah. some some heavy hitters, or I'm sorry, some close range, long range support. That's what you want. So I was looking at that and I was like, how did we forget Star Trek? That's probably one of the better sets to try to do this master minion type thing. So Yeah. Well there's also uh, under your uh rule in there, Alex. They don't have various as their name. But I've played this team before, uh in kind of that kind of that format is a brood queen from uncanny x-men with some brood. Ooh, yes that was always fun i played that game. they don't have various and they don't really have a name but uh it's a name theme team because it's a brood and you have the brood queen which is only 90 points but then you have broods that you can play at 30 or 50 points depending on how you want to build it that would be a lot of fun just just from the uncanny x i know there's older ones in critical mass that looks like yeah. but just just those were a lot of fun. I've played that team before at one of our events, and it was really fun. Yeah. Um, then also, when you start to think, like, what needs to be uh, a figure that needs to be made, and Jason can agree with me on this, because we talked about it, there need to be WWE figures that just are jobbers. So you can play Andre the Job, a bunch of jobbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, enhancement talent. Yeah, enhancement talent. Yeah, WWE. That would be the only problem with that is it'd be hard to pull off because they're, yeah, not sealed. And I mean, how are you going to sell those type of figures for ten bucks or eight bucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you'd have to, you'd have to do it. You'd have to do it in like a five pack of just those or something yeah. like that. Well, they can have like a pack of those and like managers or something and referee or something like that. Uh, could be fun. <laughs> All right, is there anything else you guys want to talk about before I, I mean, we could do a little casual final thoughts? I think we did that last time. Um, but kind of to wrap up the show, anything else you guys want to talk about for this episode? Um, next episode, uh, which will probably be closer to April, we'll talk probably a little bit more about Black Widow because uh, we'll actually hopefully have those in our hands. Um, and then hopefully we're done with this whole quarantine thing and we can talk more about some local events. Yeah, hope, let's hope so. I'm I'm ready to play some JLU figures. So, uh, let's do this uh, on our way out. Why don't we also talk about what you look forward to reading? Like, is there any comics you? Oh yeah. Want to take a look at in the next coming weeks, especially since most of us are going to be homebound. What well, what are you? And it doesn't have to be comics. It could be something in the DC universe, TV shows. You could watch Arrow and the Flash. I don't know. What what are you taking in that is DC or Marvel wise or WWE or whatever? Um, though I guess there's not much WWE going. So, what are you taking in lately? Um, I wanna, coming in soon. I want to try to read some of the latest Doctor Strange series. I've heard a lot of good things about it, and uh, I want to try that. The one that started in 2018. Which one you broke? You broke up there at the end. Which one? Uh, Doctor Strange, the Strange series that's out right now. I'm going to go back and try to read that and catch up on that. Gotcha. Jeremy, what about you? I don't know if you're currently reading, but... Uh, well, I just found Kingdom Come, so I might read <laughs> uh, Like I said earlier, just digging through these comics, I was like, oh man, I, there's a lot of things I hear that I read previously, but uh, I know one of the guys at the shop was telling me Immortal Hulk was really good, so I might eventually pick that up. Um, as far as like comic books, and of course, Kingdom Come. Now, as far as like WWE, there is technically still wrestlemania coming up if you just i mean there's not, not gonna be a crowd or anything but, you know, i'm gonna watch that probably um but as far as this reading i'll probably read this kingdom come i've got it out now um flipping through it just the artwork is great in this book i mean it's it just looks wonderful and i just need to go ahead and read it yeah definitely and uh, you know it's getting to be springtime perfect time to get out of hammock tied up to some trees and take out uh, your e-reader or your comic books and just lay out there, enjoy the sun and recon. That's like my dream right there. And a nice, 
nice lemonade, chilling in a hammock, just relaxing, reading some comics, taking in some some vitamin uh what is it e whatever the sun is yeah <laughs> vitamin e and, and, t- and take your yeah and take your extra vitamin c while you're at it <laughs> that's what we all need it right now <laughs> yeah you definitely want just yeah it's just uh, you, get out because you know we're all going to be in the house for a bit because i know this is weird times we keep saying that and i don't want to really talk about it because you're probably tired of talking about it so don't take the time to get out of the house as long as it's not pouring down, which, you know, where we are, it's always raining. So just, you know, try to get get out. I, I'm going to try to read, finish off Immortal Hulk. That's what I'm going to read. Um, I might, it, it might be time for me to delve into back into some War Light and some other DC things. Um, I don't know. I, I revisit, like, I just recently started rewatching the MCU again just because. I work better when I have something in the background to to distract me. I know that sounds really weird, but that it, that works for me. So I might go back and reread Civil War and then read Civil War 2 or read uh, Siege or something like that. I might go reread some of the ones I've already read before because, I mean, I read uh, House of M again not too long ago, and there are some things I missed. Like, I didn't remember like for some reason, I remember reading the House of M Spider Man stuff, but I just didn't remember a majority of it. So it's definitely it. Oh, yeah. It's always good to go back and reread some events, even if you feel pretty good about it. Just go back and reread. Not a bad idea. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Clickstaff Casualties of War. We will catch you guys next time. See ya. Later.